Right, so today I'm going to go over some concepts, um, review polar uh, in AP Calculus. Um, so before I get into some questions, uh, we want to talk about just some general equations. Uh, so first, very, 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 very commonly, you will be asked about area. So the area formula is going to be 1 half the integral from theta 1 to theta 2 of r squared d theta. If there's one uh, graph, if there's more than one, then it's going to be whatever the outside one, so I'm going to call that big R squared minus little r squared. So looking at a cross section from the origin, whichever one is the farther from the origin is the outside than the inside. You have to individually square them, not the big common mistake is do r minus r and then square it. Oftentimes you're going to be asked to relate polar back with rectangular. So x is always r cosine theta, y is always r sine theta. So oftentimes you'll replace this r with whatever your equation is. Uh, and then last question that's pretty commonly asked is about slope. So slope is dy dx, which is going to be dy d theta over dx d theta. So you'd find the expressions for x and y in terms of theta, uh, and then take their derivatives and then um, put them in this fraction. The first question I'm going to go over is from the 2017 uh, BC exam. This is question number two, which means it is a calculator allowed question, which we're going to use pretty heavily. So we're given the graphs, uh, which is pretty common. It says the figure above shows the polar curves r equals f of theta equals 1 plus sine theta cosine 2 theta. And our second one, r equals g of theta, is 2 cosine theta. Uh, we're given from 0 to pi over 2, so the first quadrant there. R is the region here, S is the region here. Um, so before I even get into this question, I'm going to go to my calculator, and I'm going to, in rectangular, and you may need to switch to polar if you um, want to, but in your calculator, I'm going to put both of those equations. two cosine x. So there's my two equations. I'm going to go ahead and label label this y1, label this y2, so I know where those are stored. Okay, so the first question says find the area of r. So r is just going to be the region bounded by f. Okay, so the area formula is one half the integral, they tell us our bounds, and this is going to be of 1 plus sine theta cosine 2 theta squared. Then we just let the calculator do the hard work for us. So we go to the calculator, and I'm going to do 0.5 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of y1 squared dx. Okay, and three decimals would be 0 0.648. Always three decimals, if not more. Okay, part b. The ray, theta equals k, where k is somewhere in that first quadrant, divides s into two equal two regions of equal area. Write, but do not solve an equation involving one or more integrals whose solution gives the value of k. Okay, there's a couple different ways to think about this. So we're saying there's some ray here that at some theta, this area is going to equal this area. Well, um, I'm going to show you one way and then I'll talk about others. I'm going to look at, okay, the integral, one half times the integral from zero to whatever that k is of this area. So that's 1 half, that's going to be, uh, I'm just going to use g, g of theta 
squared minus f of theta squared. Okay, that's going to equal the area from k to pi over 2 of that same thing. Okay, so you can do it like this. You could do the integral from 0 to k is equal to, um, so find the whole area and then find the value um, there. Uh, but this was what makes sense to me. Okay, for the third part of this problem, we're going to let w of theta be the distance between the polar coordinates f of uh, theta and g of theta. Write an expression for w. So that's just simply going to be g of theta minus f of theta. Okay, it's just going to be this r minus this r. Uh, find w a, the average value of w theta over the interval 0 to pi over 2. So average value is going to be 1 over pi over 2 minus 0 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of this. Okay, and then we're going to let the calculator do this. So I have 1 over pi over 2 minus 0 uh, times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of, this is going to be y2 minus y1. Okay, so we get 0 0.485 for that average value. Okay, the last part of this problem. Use the information in part C to find the value of theta for which uh, the function value equals the average value. Um, and then is it increasing or decreasing at that value of theta? So we're looking for where W of theta is equal to 0.48, and I'm going to go a little bit more, 5, 4, 4, 6, 1, 3. Okay, so I'm going to let the calculator do the work for me. I'm going to hit enter, hit enter, so I don't want to see those. I'm going to do an expression for W. Okay, so I unhighlighted those. Okay, which is going to be Y2 minus y1. I'm going to put this value, 0.485446134. For my window, I want to go from 0 to pi over 2. For my y's, I just need to be able to see this value. So I'm going to go from 0 to 1, because that'll be half, about halfway there. Then we'll graph. slowly but surely, then we'll have our horizontal line. So that's our solution here. So I'm going to calculate the intersection, first curve, second curve, guess. Okay, so the intersection I get is at theta equals 0.517688. Okay, then it says, is W increasing or decreasing at that point? So I'm actually going to use, you can do the, so do, we want the derivative. Um, you can do the derivative, sorry, sake. Um, you can do the derivative just in your home screen, or you can actually do the derivative on the graph. It's going to ask you for where, so we want 0.517688, and it's going to give me a derivative value there kind of hard to see, of negative 0.581. Okay, so is the function w increasing or decreasing? It is decreasing because w prime is less than zero. OK, 
Okay, the next polar problem I'm going to go over is from the 2011 exam. This is also question two, so again we get a calculator. So we have the polar curve r equals 3 theta plus sine theta, where we're between 0 and 2 pi. So I'm going to get rid of all this stuff and start over. 3x plus sine x. So we've got it in the calculator. What is the area in the second quadrant um, enclosed by the graph of r? So that's area is going to equal 1 half the integral for the second quadrant. That's going to be pi over 2 to pi. And you can put r here, or you can put the entire equation. And then the calculator is going to do our work for us. So 0.5 times the integral from 0 to pi, nope, pi over 2 to pi of y1 squared gives us 47.513. So anytime you do this, make sure you show this because typically you'll get points for the integral and you'll get points for the answer. Okay, for problem B. It says for pi over 2 to pi, so that second quadrant again, there is one point P on the polar curve with an x coordinate of negative 3. Find the angle theta that corresponds to P, find the y coordinate of point P, and show the work that leads to your answers. So from our formulas, x is always our cosine theta. So we're saying x is equal to r is my equation, so 3 theta plus sine theta, cosine theta, and we're looking for where that is equal to negative 3. Okay, so we're going to go to our calculator. Okay, I'm going to unhighlight this. I'm going to create a new equation here. I'm going to have y1 times cosine theta and I want negative 3. For my window, we want pi over 2 to pi. And then for my y's, we're trying to see that negative 3. So I'm going to go from, let's go negative 4 to negative 2, something like that. Okay. Then we will graph. There's our winner, so calculate the intersection. Okay, so we get theta is equal to, and I'm going to do more than three decimals here because I'm using it in another part of the problem. Okay, so that's my theta, and then it wants to know what the y coordinate is at that theta. I'm going to call this theta. P, let's just say P, theta P, maybe. Because then if I, I call it something, then I can, I don't have to write this whole thing. So my Y is our sine theta. So Y is 3 theta plus sine theta. Sine theta. So my y is going to be 3, I'm going to call it theta p plus sine theta p, or you can write that whole number in there, sine theta p. Okay, and then when you type all that in, or get a calculation there, uh, you get 6.2724. Okay, the last part of this problem, a particle is traveling around the polar curve r so that its position uh, at time t is x of t, y of t, and such that d theta dt is 2, 
find dy d theta at this instant when theta equals 2 pi over 3. And then interpret the meaning of our question. So we want dy dt. That's going to equal d theta dt. times dy d theta. Okay, so the thetas, we have an expression that doesn't involve theta. Uh, we can calculate d theta, well we know d theta dt is 2, and we can find dy d theta using our y equation that we had up there previously. I'm actually going to go to my calculator, and I'm going to just change this to a sign. So in my y2 is my expression for y because that's r sine theta. So this is going to be 2 dt at theta equals 2 pi over 3 is going to equal 2 times dy d theta evaluated at theta equals 2 pi over 3. So here I'm going to do 2 times, and then I'm going to do the numerical derivative of y2 that's where I stored that equation, at 2 pi over 3. So we get negative 2.819. What does this mean? Uh, that means that the y-coordinate is decreasing. of 2.819 when theta equals 2 pi over 3. Uh, so those were two examples of polar equation problems. So if you know the formulas, um, a lot of it's pretty easy, and sometimes they throw in a, a more complicated part. Um, but that's how we handle polar equations.